Danielle from Ireland. I'm starting off the vlog here, which is so random. I'm in a restroom in a cafe called The Fumbly, but I'm here for five days, four days, something like that, five days for a wedding. I'm here with Shelby. Here we are. I don't really know what else to say, but I have to go order food. <laughs> Finished with afternoon tea. Jet lag hit us both hard, but I wanted to give a tour of the hotel room. Okay, and you come in. They brought our bags up for us and they put them on the little luggage stands, which is really nice. And then we have two closets. This one just has hangers, ironing board, umbrella, little slippers. And then over here we have coffee station, tea station, hair dryer, you know, all those necessities. And then moving over into the restroom. I love this full length mirror. There's actually a lot of mirrors in here. Obviously this one and then this big one up against the wall, two robes bathtub, shower, very, very pretty. Everything you can need in a restroom, lots of cotton swabs, Q-tips, uh, soap, and all that jazz. Okay, we're good over here. Oh, even a little stool. Desk area, everything is just, it matches. It has this beautiful, I don't even know what you would call, it's like an oriental design. I don't know, but, these are all the little pastries from our tea. And then, I don't know, desk area. Oh, we forgot. Oof. We forgot converters. The hotel comes with them already in the rooms, which is a lifesaver. Another mirror, little chair, fresh fruit plate, which is amazing. Chocolates, which is very nice, water. There's my luggage that they put on a little stand. And then the most beautiful, lovely street view. Honestly, this is a gorgeous view from the window. It's actually really pretty over there. I don't know what this building is yet. I have to double check. And then the bed, nice big king size bed for Shelby and I. Lots of room and a TV. Don't care about the TV, we're getting in that right now. but we're getting in the bed. We're taking a nap because we're just very tired and we want to take a nap because we know we have a, a night ahead of us. Vintage cocktail club, the elevator right there. We don't even have time to show our outfits, but I'm in a pink fuzzy thing with a burgundy silk skirt, tights, and these little shoes. And then Shelby, oh, now it wants to do flash. Shelby looks very nice. We're just very late meeting people for cocktails. Time's been getting away from us on this trip so far. Completely. Like really bad. But this is another nice elevator, like the one I had in Athens. We hungry. It's a right. Click, clack, click, and clack, clack. Just go. <laughs> Don't drink all the Coke. Oh, yeah. Don't eat all the fries. I'm not going to. Is this is What is my room number? 88. Shut up, Paul. XO, XO, Guys, One thing about us. We go. Well, how, why do we have two 20 pieces? That's <laughs> not okay. What? Savagery. Why do we have two, <laughs> two 20 pieces? What do we do? 20 Where's our drink? Oh. 
Get that down here. Ex Please explain something. What? We're finally ready for the hen party tonight. Yeah. Shelby's dressed very cute. Vera. This is what I'm wearing. Black skirt, black turtleneck. It's all Aritzia. Actually, the entire outfit is from Aritzia. Your shoes? No, those are Steve Madden. Cutie. The tights are from CVS. But... Awesome. We're doing it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cheers. These look fantastic, honestly. Cheers. It's actually very good. It's perfect. I'm gonna take a little picture of this. I'm back at the hotel. I haven't been talking much on here because we've been so busy and I'm just not really good. I feel like at vlogging when I'm with someone, when I do solo trips, it's easier and on my layovers because I'm alone. But when I'm traveling with friends, I, I, I don't know. I feel funny talking to the camera with someone else there. But um, Shelby stayed out with everyone. I just got really tired. I've only slept in over 24 hours. Honestly, probably like 30 something hours. I've only gotten three hours of sleep. I didn't sleep last night. I tried to take a nap today. I think I only slept for like an hour. So it is almost 2 a.m. And I was like, you know what guys, I'm gonna peace out. I'm just really tired. Um, and we still have two more days of wedding festivities. So I can call it a night for tonight. But I am so impressed by this hotel. This is hands down the best hotel I've ever stayed in. The Marion Hotel in Dublin. They think of everything here, and the turndown service is beautiful. I called before we left and asked to have the room cleaned in a turndown service, and let me just show you. I absolutely love the way they just organize all of our little things. It's absolutely so satisfying. I don't know how I'm talking. I'm delirious. It's so satisfying to me to come back to just absolute organization. I mean... Every little thing. Look at this. I love it. A bottle of water for each of us at the side of the bed. Um, they have shoe bags for us, which is extremely kind. Oh, breakfast in bed if we want, which is incredible. Toiletries. Sewing kit, which I might need, honestly. Shoe shine kit, which I'm actually going to use for my loafers like the little slippers they folded anything we had lying around everything is just so look at that it makes me so pleased all of it i love this kind of stuff it, it's the little things that make me so happy i know i'm getting older because one i didn't want to stay at that bar with everyone and two order and cleanliness in hotel rooms is very important to me very important to me but the Jameson factory was fun. We went to Temple Bar. We went to, where do we have dinner? The Green Hen. And then we just went to Temple Bar again after all of that. We went to some, the Hairy Lemon. It was fun. I, I love Temple Bar. It was actually calm at Temple Bar, which really surprised me. I'm not used to it being calm at Temple Bar. I'm used to it always being crazy, no matter what. I don't want to leave this hotel. I wish we were staying here the entire time we were in Dublin, but... I will definitely be coming back to this hotel one day. I just absolutely love it. Oh, they closed the curtains nice for us. All right, guys, I'm going to wash my face. I'm going to put on my jammies and put on my little slippers and go to bed. They gave us a good room, too.
doing car rental stuff than it is an experience. We checked out of the Marianne, which I'm devastated. I did not want to leave that hotel. They want to put a $2,000 hold on our card that would stay there for 60 days or 30 days. So we just, I don't usually get the insurance, but we got the insurance. Anyway, I've, I've driven all over Ireland before and driven on the other side of the road. I've done the same in St. Lucia, but I'm just nervous this time for whatever reason, because doing it in the city is so much more intimidating. And I remember being stressed out driving in Dublin last time I was here. <laughs> We made it to our Dublin hotel. Everyone's downstairs. Long story short, we got in a car wreck. So I'm going downstairs to meet everyone. We got a ride from our friends to, I figure this is better, to the hotel that we're staying at. But I'll tell more about the wreck later. But we're staying in a castle, which is cool. I'm just wearing comfy clothes, sweater, leggings. I wore a reformation dress yesterday to the wedding, which was really nice. I got a lot of compliments on it. I'm, I'm obsessed with reformation now. For any kind of event, those are the dresses that I wanna wear. I just love them. But they're all waiting for me downstairs. So I have to go. It'll be story time when I get back home. <laughs> This was our hotel last night. There's Shelby. It's pretty funny. Oh my goodness. All right. Mm. I'm home. I just finished cleaning up my kitchen. I made dinner. Uh, I got home, we landed at like 1.30 or something. So I got home like just after two, hit the ground running, immediately went to go get my nails fixed, 
go to Whole Foods to get some food for tomorrow because I have to work tomorrow morning. Made dinner, I've been doing laundry. I had to pack because I have a San Francisco trip tomorrow. There's just so much going on. I would have loved to have a buffer day off, but I, it's just not possible, so it is what it is. What a wild trip. This trip was crazy, and it definitely, it didn't go as I expected whatsoever. It was so wild. I had an incredible time with the wedding festivities it's like the in-between times that for starters i was already fairly sleep deprived starting the trip off just for like i don't know my anxiety's been worse lately i'm i don't know i've had a messed up schedule whatever i was already like not sleeping great but i i felt like i'd finally gotten a routine but then of course you travel jet lag jumbles that up and not to mention every night there was a reason to go out drinking some type of event happening because of the it's a wedding weekend you know which was amazing but then it kind of contributed to the jet lag in a way but it was fun and worth it then like that was fun it was the second night in ireland where like the first night was hilarious shelby and i got really really tipsy with everyone shelby and i got mcdonald's on the way back sat on our hotel floor ate mcdonald's just went to bed really late let ourselves sleep in have breakfast came back slept some more like it was fine it was the second night i didn't get back to my hotel room to our hotel room until it was two almost three something like that maybe 1 30 and i was exhausted i was like i just want to go to bed shelby was still out having fun a lot of people wanted to stay out and i was like i gotta sleep because I didn't really sleep that night before and I wasn't really able to take a nap once we tried to come back and sleep after breakfast. So I was like, I'm gonna let myself sleep because we have a whole day tomorrow as well to drive down to Carlo County, County Carlo, where we were driving to. I come back and I got some, as I'm like going to bed, I couldn't really fall asleep. I looked at my phone and I got some really disturbing information that was it was some a situation that i was already aware of but i didn't know the extent of it and i can't share because it's just personal stuff regarding people in my life but it was so upsetting that there was no possible way i was going to sleep for the rest of the night no possible way shelby came back like a couple hours later she was shocked to see me awake at this point it's like five o'clock in the morning and she's like i can't believe you're awake and i was like girl <laughs> I can't either and I, I I fell asleep we were up for a while talking about things and I think I was able to finally fall asleep before we had to get up because we had to check out check out was at I don't even remember what time and we had to get the car to go drive a couple hours down to where the wedding venue was and we had some stops we wanted to do along the way so I've driven in Ireland before mind you I've Four years ago, I drove all over literally the entire country of Ireland. I've driven all the way around. Small towns, country roads, bigger towns, cities, you know, Belfast, Shannon, Galway, whatever. I've done it all. Dingles Pass or Connors Pass, all those crazy roads. I've done it all. So I was very confident in driving. I've driven in St. Lucia, which they drive the same way. Other side of the street, other side of the car. I'm I've always been confident in driving like that um but i had never done it i don't think completely sleep deprived and completely preoccupied and my mind being out el elsewhere i was just gone and really 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 stressed out but whatever i was trying to make the best of it we got the car we started driving i was doing fine and it was when we were going we were in the town of where we needed to be like okay it's time for us to figure out what road we need to take to get to where we're staying, our Airbnb. And I was like, let me drive to the center of the town because she gave directions kind of from the center of town. And which is, and when I say town, it's like one tiny little street. Rathvilly is the name of it. So we're going into the town, it's dark out. Mind you, our windshield wipers weren't working very well. So every time like they were expired, every time they'd go down, they'd make the window blurrier. I'm looking at the cars facing us and i'm looking at the parked cars on the side of the road and some of them are facing us and some of them are going with traffic which really threw me off and i was literally saying to shelby i don't like the way that car is parked it makes me uncomfortable it's like it's sticking out the way it's facing us in the street or something at the same time it's like a bend and mind you again dark raining our windshield wipers don't work very well in that moment around the bend there was this big truck shelby didn't even see the truck 
I saw the truck. And also there's a, there was a road where a car was like pulling out into the street, but they were waiting for us. So when this big truck came, like no, those cars drive fast and these roads are tiny if you've ever been to Ireland and extremely narrow. Truck comes whipping around the corner. I'm staring at the truck. I moved to go out of the truck's way. Shelby was looking at the car that I was talking about. So she screamed because she saw what was happening. And before I realized it, and the next thing you knew, we were, I hit the car and we like drug along the side of it and I ruined that car. I'll put pictures up of everything that happened. I totally messed up that car. I was in complete shock of what had just happened. Um, dented in the door, knocked their side view mirror off, flattened their tire. Our car mainly just had scratches and dents, but what happened was because my tire hit that the tire of the parked car, it broke the axis of our car. So our car was now not drivable. And all the cars drove away in that moment, which was interesting, not me. I like pulled over into a parking spot, but like what was weird to me was like all the other cars that were around that were driving, like left, like no one stuck around. I, I don't know, I thought that was interesting. I'm panicking, like panicking. I remember shaking so hard and just, I didn't know, it was, it was horrible. Crying, just so upset because I had no idea what was about to happen because I, it was so bad looking at the car, looking at us. I had no idea who the owner was. So the owner, oh my God. Thankfully, a cop saw what happened. A guard is what they call them. And he came over to us because it happened right in front of where he lived. He came running over to us and he had already run into a pub that was across the street. Mind you, when I saw this pub, the, the dread that came over my body of realizing I have to go walk into that pub and find whoever's car I just hit and tell them, oh my God. Thankfully, I didn't end up having to do that because the cop did it for me. He was off duty. He came over to us and he was like, are you guys okay? And I think I just started crying or something. And he was like, it's okay. He was consoling me. So sweet. He was like, it's okay. It's okay. Everyone's all right. You guys aren't hurt, right? And I was like, no. And I think him being nice made me cry even more. And then the owner came out and I was like, fuck. But he had like a smile on his face. And he looked at it and he was like, oh man. He was like kind of laughing about it. Dude, I'm so tired now, it's 8.30. He was kind of laughing about it. And he was like, it's okay, I'm not panicked, so you shouldn't be panicked. And I was like, I just ruined your car. And he was very, very kind. And he was doing the same thing the cop was doing. He was like, it's okay, like don't worry, it's okay. I think I was making, I wasn't like sobbing, but it was like tears coming down my face and me like wiping them away. They were genuinely seemed more concerned about me being upset and, and whether or not Shelby and I were okay. We had to call our Airbnb host. We exchanged all the information, took pictures of everything we needed to take pictures of. Um, and then the cop and the guy, the guy just like went back to the bar to continue drinking his beer. He was like, I was gonna walk home anyway because I've been drinking. <laughs> our Airbnb host came to pick us up. She was so amazing. She was so sweet. She brought us back to the Airbnb. She gave me a hug because I was crying a lot at that point because I started saying like, it's just so much at once. Like I'm, I've got, I have no sleep and drama at home. And um, I just started crying and she was like, oh my goodness, it's okay. And she hugged me and took me back to the, took us back to the Airbnb, gave us a bottle of wine. We made some phone calls, got information sorted. Even the people with the car rental company were asking if we were okay. It was very, very sweet. And they were more concerned about, they were just like, what happened over the phone? Instead of these like robotic responses, like you're used to getting, I feel like here in the States. So thankfully we had full coverage insurance. I do have to pay for, I have to pay for the car to get towed, to be towed back to Dublin, which is, I think there's gonna be like $350 roughly, he said on the phone. I guess I just have to wait to see how much it's gonna cost. It sucks, but thank God we got full coverage insurance so I don't have to pay for any of the damages because that would have been a lot of money. Other than that, the wedding was stunning. Tried to like forget about everything and, enjo and just enjoy the wedding. Um, we were out really late the night of the wedding. Oh, the night that the wreck happened, I actually got like 10 hours of sleep. That's the only night I slept while I was in Ireland. Night of the wedding, didn't get any sleep. I didn't go to bed until five o'clock in the morning. And then we had to wake up to leave and check out. Our, thankfully, our friends gave us a ride back to Dublin and we stayed in the castle last night. Oh my goodness. And the castle was cool. 
but I didn't sleep. I don't know why I did not sleep. I, I fell asleep pretty fast, but I woke up like a couple hours later and never fell back asleep. I was up from 2 a.m. and then I fell asleep around like six something and my alarm went off at seven for us to get ready to eat breakfast and go to the airport. <laughs> And then I didn't really sleep on the plane because my seat wouldn't recline. It like, it would recline, but it, would pop, it wouldn't stay. It would like weirdly pop back up. It was so strange. So I slept kind of on the airplane. So I'm still technically pretty sleep deprived. And I have to work tomorrow, but I'm going to go to bed soon. It's 8.30. Guys, what a, that was a wild trip. A wild trip. For those of you who are new here, my name is Vera. <laughs> Follow for more adventures. Oh my gosh, I'll be vlogging tomorrow's trip and I hope you enjoyed this this vlog as fast as it was with the clips of while I was actually there. I was just so distracted, you know, filming. I feel like it kind of messed up my vlogging process, everything that happened, but I still tried to get as much as I could when I was in the mindset to film. Anyway, guys, leave a comment down below. If, craziest thing that's ever happened to you abroad, I would love to hear it or most traumatic thing that's ever happened traveling. And I'm gonna go to bed. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Balance Flyer. Good night, guys.